All right, so I was um, included in a book tag by Jason Furman, and uh, so I guess I just have the opportunity to answer a bunch of questions that are related to, you know, books. I'll warn you in advance that I'm not scripting this, and I'm not very good at speaking off the cuff, but I also don't want to put too much effort into this. So we'll just see how it goes, right? So the first question, let's just get right into it. How many books are too much in a series? Um, the first thought is, can you really say a specific number? I mean, it really just depends on the type of story that's being told, right? It's one of those things where, like, a story can be too long if, like, it's not meant to be, like, say, a trilogy. Like, they just release the standalone. They're like, oh, you need to add two more. You can usually kind of tell just because it's not meant to be that. That said, I tend to like longer series. Um... But even then, I still have, like, biases from the outside, you know, like, like One Piece is one of my favorite mangas, right? And that has, I think, 1,181 chapters to it. It's been, like, going on for, like, two decades. And I remember, like, hearing about it from the outside several times, and it's just like, nope, I'm not doing that. But then, you know, you start it, and it's just like, now from the inside, <laughs> I'm like, I'm all caught up. It's like... Undoubtedly, I'm going to reread this entire thing from the ground up. I know that for a fact. I just wanted to keep going. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I guess one thing I could also mention is that longer series, they tend to have uh, the side effect of not being finished. You know, Berserk may or not may not get finished in the best way possible because uh, he passed away. Song of Ice and Fire, you know, the Second Apocalypse, these are series I love, but neither are finished. Um, One Piece is still ongoing, though that probably will be finished because he doesn't even take... Um, what's the plural of hiatus? Hiatai? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so there is that side effect of them not being finished. They're, just, they're much harder to do. There's a lot of problems, but yeah, you just got to do it right. Whatever. All right, next question. How do I feel about cliffhangers? Um, honestly, it's kind of complicated. Like, my first gut response is that it seems, just seems cheap. Like, think about it. Like, the momentum of the story itself should keep the reader interested, right? Like, you don't need, like, some cheap little cliffhanger at the end of each chapter, let's say. You know, like, the, the person lunged at him with the knife, and then cut. And it's like... Read to find out what happens. It's like, oh God, please just stop. At the same time, I also kind of get the impression that it's kind of like jump scares, where it's really easy to just fall in this trap of just saying, oh, they're so cheap, they're so stupid. You know, only crappy horror films do them as like a cheap way to make people jump in their seats. But okay, let's be honest. Um, jump scares aren't always bad. It's it, they have to be utilize in the right way you have to like build up the tension and then release the tension you have to use them in a the right way so same with cliffhangers i don't want to say you know cliffhangers are all just bad and also part of me just wonders like what exactly is a cliffhanger like i gave the example before about lunging matter with the knife and then it cuts but like sometimes i end chapters where like news gets released to the city right and it's like the chapter ends with the person saying, like, you know, this person was just released from prison or something, and it just cuts, and you don't see the reactions of the characters, right? But then, like, when it picks up, it, like, picks up, like, several weeks later or something, like, it's not like it picks up right where it left off, right? Is that a cliffhanger? I, I don't know if a strict definition or a strict answer to that question matters, but um, I guess it's worth considering. All right, next question. Paperbacks or hardcovers? Um, it's paperback usually. Nothing too complicated. Uh, next question. What is my favorite book? Uh, it's either A Storm of Swords or The Hun Unholy Consult. Okay, so like the first is from A Song of Ice and Fire, you know, George R. R. Martin's books. And then The Unholy Consult is the is from The Second Apocalypse, which is by R. Scott Baker. And, I mean, both of these series in general are probably the most formative influences on my own writing. 
I mean, like, George R. R. Martin, that's probably the top one, to be honest. Like, at, at this point, it, the influence is a bit older. Um, like, I haven't read his books in a while, so it's kind of... And I've recently gotten off my Baker High, so I don't know how the things will settle in the long term. But, but both are incredibly formative. You know, Martin, in particular, that's what motivated me to start my own series in the first place. My series is Political Intrigue as the primary plot um, structure. So, and that's, I got it from Martin. He like, he showed me the extent to which you could do that. But then Baker is taking things in a much more philosophical and brutal direction, if that can be believed. And that's going to influence the long-term series, uh, the long-term of my series as well. So I don't know. But yeah, both are just, they're vicious, they're cruel, they pay off things in so many awesome ways. And it's just it's great. I love it. <laughs> what is your least favorite book? American Pastoral. Uh, I don't even have to think about it. Um, I actually have a, a review of this, and I'm actually very, very proud of that review. Um, I can link it in the description. It's just a written review. I will actually record a video of it. I don't think I'm going to record re videos of every one of my reviews that's up. Um, but this is one of those ones that I'm absolutely going to do. So... I, I don't have the video yet, but the I do have the written review on my blog, and I'll link that below. How do you feel about love triangles? Honestly, I don't really read about these that often. Yeah, but usually they're kind of just annoying. I just I don't like teen drama, but I don't really read that type of stories anyway, so I don't really have strong feelings about it, to be honest, because, yeah, I just don't have to deal with it. The most recent book I couldn't finish... The Vor. I was participating. I even voted for the book in uh, Jason Furman's read along, and man, I I got what was like thirty percent through. I just I couldn't do it, uh, and I still don't un understand exactly what the problem is. Like on his face, it just seems like it's the prose. It just he has a poet, and that's obviously the focus of his story. And it just it made me so angry, so frustrating. I would read passages over and over and over again. So I tend to be over analytical. I tend to read into things so much. I have to analyze things in such meticulous detail. And it's sometimes it can just get so obsessive compulsive. Not that I'm like clinically diagnosed, but like I just yeah you know, I just get way into the weeds. And if I'm not understanding something that I'm reading, I just I. Again, I stagnate. I just reread it and reread it and reread it. Then eventually my motivation evaporates and I just can't do it anymore. But again, like at the same time, there's caveats because Baker, I mean, his prose just got pretty obnoxious by the end of his series too. Like I mentioned, The, the Unholy Console. That's like, um, I don't know if that's the worst example, but that the prose in that is really dense, really impenetrable in certain ways but i don't know i i guess the prose in the beginning of this series wasn't nearly as bad i was invested in the characters in the story before the prose escalated to like a fever pitch in terms of its incomprehensibility so it's just like i don't know if his prose is as bad or just like the surrounding context that made it more bearable i just i don't know um yeah just as a whole I've evaluated the Vor worse, and I just couldn't even finish it. But Baker was definitely a chore. Enjoyable chore, but definitely a chore. Um, book I am currently reading. I'm actually reading two. At uh, first, is, I guess a spoiler. I was keeping it a secret, and I was going to surprise. But uh, I'm reading A Song for the End of the World um, by Jason Furman. Um, I'm partway through it. Reading it pretty slowly right now. Um, reading everything pretty slowly right now. Um, I'm also reading a nonfiction book. It's called The Dictator's Handbook. It's a really interesting uh, political science book that basically argues that uh, fundamentally all political rulers um, care about is acquiring and maintaining power. And this applies to all political systems. So... The, the general idea is that the distinction between, say, like more democratic institutions and more dictator-inclined institutions, the difference is not a difference in kind. It's actually a difference in degree. It's like, so the degree to which you have to, like, scratch the backs of 
people. So essentially, dictators, they have a very small cohort of people they have to appease in order to maintain power. Well, democracies, that cohort is much larger. Um, and my, my thinking is pretty cynical and, or pessimistic, I guess is the better word. So this isn't really like shattering my mind. My mind's already in that space already. Uh, but it's definitely helping refine my thinking on this, the subject. So it's, it's very interesting. And I'm just, I'm a massive political junkie. And, you know, as you know, my series that I'm writing right now is political intrigue. So just all of that fits together. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to lie. Lately, my, I, I've been going through a little bit of a reading slump, not because of what I'm reading, but because I've been so focused on other things. Like I've been listening to a lot of podcasts or YouTube videos that are more philosophical. Like today I, I watched a video about the, the trans issue. Um, and then I started like, it like took me hours to get through the video because I kept, you know, I keep pausing, pacing around the room for like half an hour, hour or something, thinking about the nature of identity, you know, like what is identity and is it fundamental? Is it mutable? What, uh, what implications does that have for morality? All of that. And, you know, how that ties into the trans issue and all that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's where my mind's at. But yeah, I'll get I'll get done with the books eventually. Last book I recommended, um, it's a book called Tunnels. It's actually part of a series. It's a YA, a young adult series. Uh, basically, I, I work at a bookstore and we do staff picks, and they're always like, you know, you want to make a suggestion. They're always asking me, and like I just I don't have anything. I don't I don't know the stuff I tend to read isn't usually the most popular stuff. I don't know like. I did actually have the opportunity to recommend Baker to the staff picks. That was fun. But the recent one was Tunnels. And it was, yeah, a YA series. And it's, I've been thinking about going back to it just because out of interest. Um, I don't know if I'll like it anymore because it's YA. But even then, it was very dark and pretty brutal for a YA series. So, yeah. Uh, newest book I read. Um, I don't know, and I don't really care to check, so, yeah, let's just move on. Uh, favorite author? It's either Martin or Baker, I guess. I don't know. Um, in general, like, my philosophy, actually, is I try to avoid having role models. You know, like, oh, like, my personal hero is, you know, I try to avoid that. I try to detach myself from those types of connections. That's not, that doesn't mean that I don't have those tendencies, doesn't mean I don't tend to, like, recognize certain people and have a lot of respect for them. You know, like, I have a lot of respect for George Orwell as a, a left-wing political commentator. And then I have a lot of respect for Thomas Sowell, who's a right-wing political commentator. But, you know, I, I'm usually try to, I try to be conscious about, like, noticing their flaws and try to be as objective as possible, whatever that might mean. Um, and I, that, that applies to favorite authors. I don't, I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I guess Martin and Baker, because I enjoyed their series, but they have problems too. So, yeah, I guess I just don't weight those problems as much as other people might. You know, like other people might re read those series. I agree with all their criticisms. Just like, I just, I don't care that much. Um, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Buying books or borrowing them. I usually buy them or I arg them. A book I dislike that everyone seems to love. I mean, I've already mentioned American Pastoral, uh, and I, I can't really think of anything else, but th that one, uh, a Pulitzer Prize, so my God. Bookmarks or dog ears? Um, people who dog ear books are, I can't really say. Not because I'm not willing to in the abstract, but, you know, there's a terms of service on YouTube. It creates a certain incentive structure, right? I got to be careful. Um, but on a on the bright note, um, I, there is a redemption arc in the real world. Because I used to dog ear books, but I don't anymore. So pats on the back, I guess. <laughs> um, books that I can always reread. Um, a Song of Ice and Fire, uh, The Second Apocalypse. It's not even just sheer enjoyment, right? Those are just the types of series that are so complex that you just need, you need to reread them. 
you know, there's just so much you'll get on the second reread. And I'm probably going to do end up doing a, re, a read-along for the Baker's Second Apocalypse with um, Zara, who uh, has a book channel, a uh, booktube channel here. And, and she suggested that we do one uh, months down the line. I don't know if I'll be able to participate in it because I tend to mood read, but I'm thinking about it. Uh, one point of view or multiple points of view. Uh, multiple, definitely. Um, I like to compare and contrast characters. Just, yeah, just getting inside the head of just a whole cast of characters. Um, I like the way Martin does it. I like the way Abercrombie does it. And, yeah, just the ability to compare and contrast them. And I just, I love the idea of getting, giving lit different styles to characters. You know, like in my own writing, you know, one of the characters I try to do shorter sentences and shorter paragraphs on average and more declarative uh, ways of describing things. And then other characters, they tend to have longer paragraphs, longer sentences. They tend to, you know, ponder things philosophically more often. So, like, I just, I love this whole idea of, you know, having characters uh, and characterizing them in different ways and then comparing and contra contrasting them. Um, also, it's just very satisfying to be on a, a plot-wise level uh, when, like, the, the, the plot itself emerges from multiple points of view. So, again, Martin is a perfect example of this, where you, you see it from this character's eyes and then this character's eyes. And then, like, nothing's spelled out to you, but you, the, the story kind of just emerges out of that constant shifting of perspective. Like, for some reason, that alone is just, like, viscerally satisfying to me. Can you read in one sitting or over multiple days? My God, uh, I am an impossibly slow reader. I can barely read a sentence at a time, let alone a whole book. Like, quite literally, I was reading the, the Dictator's Handbook, and there was like a passing one-sentence comment on how, you know, some say money is the root of all evil. And, like, literally, I had to put down the book, and I, like, started pacing around the room, like, you know, hmm. You know, assuming our a common understanding of evil, like, do I actually agree with that? And I was like, no, I don't think I agree with that. You know, like, money just represents how we collectively evaluate things. And to say that money is the root of all evil, like, it's more like humanity's desires and our desire to acquire things. That is the problem. Money is just the way in which we represent it and... Uh, represent how we collectively evaluate things and then make it practical and come up with a practical means of trading and exchanging goods. So, uh, I mean, technically, money's a good thing in a sense that it makes trade much easier, you know, instead of having to trade, you know, like a book for a, some food or something, you have a medium of exchange, money. Um, so, yeah, evil comes from us, our desires. It's not money. Uh, and that looks like it's the last one. Uh, and apparently you're supposed to tag people, but I don't really know who to tag. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really care to do... Uh, I don't really care about that. I, I guess I could tag Zara, who I mentioned before, but she is only passingly aware of me, so it um, doesn't really matter. That's about it.